Well, amen. amen. I'll tell you, I, I'm glad. I'm so happy for Freedom Baptist Church. Uh, you've got it. Amen. I mean, the Lord's here. And you've got some of the best singing I've heard in a long time. Amen. I mean, God is in this place. And you ought to be thrilled about it. Amen. Thrilled about it. I've been in 85 churches since I retired. And I want to tell you, I sat down there tonight and enjoyed myself. Amen. And I'm glad you've got a place that we can come to and do that. Uh, I told my wife this morning, I said, those folks are so friendly. I never have had my hand shook so many times from the parking lot in this morning. And that means a lot to me because I realize and know through the years we've lost some of that in so many places. But I'm glad. Pastor, thank you for inviting me to come and uh, be here tonight. Uh, I've been in these places and all these churches, but I've never asked anybody to preach. It's always been the Lord that made the appointment. And I'll tell you, that makes it better. Amen? And God is able. Tonight, I was praying about what to preach, and uh, there's a message that I have preached in all of our churches except freedom. And I said, uh, Lord, uh, you've laid this on my heart. I'm going to preach it. And I believe tonight, after hearing the pastor this morning, what a great message. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you, that was wonderful. We got a checkup this morning. But you thought you had a checkup. You're going to have another one tonight. Amen. <laughs> I want you to turn with me, please, to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11 in the Word of God. And again, it's a thrill. I won't start reminiscing tonight. I know so many of you, and this place has been such a blessing to me through these years. I thank God for all that you've meant to me. And I want you to know tonight, beloved, uh, whatever you see in me, let's, let's, let's get it straight. It's God. Beloved, I was just a little old country boy down here on Holler Road. When God found me and saved me, and beloved, everything about me in my life, beloved, it's Jesus. I'll tell you that right now. It's God. Uh, we give him the glory. In chapter 11, verse 1, and the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Aren't you glad the Gentiles, that's us tonight, has received the word of God. And when Peter was come to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him, saying, Thou wentest into a man uncircumcised and didst eat with them? Listen to Peter. Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, Beloved, he had to go into all that God had done in his heart, how God spoke to him and told him about Cornelius, and Cornelius was lost. And, beloved, he's a Gentile. Peter's a Jew. And here he comes back. He was rejoicing. You ever, you ever had God bless and meet up with somebody that tried to take out all the blessing? Beloved Peter come back. He had had one of the greatest services. Beloved, uh, uh, we find that the Word of God tells us that this Gentile had got saved. And not only this Gentile, but his whole household got saved. And he come back, and beloved, here the disciples were talking to him in, in verse 3, and they went into the men uncircumcised that didst eat with them, and Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded by order unto them, saying, and told them about being in Joppa, and told them how God spoke to his heart. He rehearsed it, and when he got done rehearsing, he had a service. I mean, God blessed again. If you look over in the latter part of this chapter, the Bible says in verse 15, And I began to speak, and the Holy Ghost fell on them as it was at the beginning. And then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much uh, then as God gave them like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? 
And so when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God. I'm telling you that they saw what God had done. When Peter rehearsed, they understood. Now tonight, let me just ask you tonight as we are together, I believe there's a way for you to be blessed tonight. Not from this preacher, but I believe, beloved, if you, since you've been saved by the grace of God, would go back a little bit and rehearse, would you do it? God's give you some, a computer up here. And beloved, I'll tell you, I'll guarantee you tonight, every single one of you can go back and think about where you was when God saved your soul. The gospel was preached. The Spirit of God was at work. And you got saved by the grace of God. Amen. 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 You hadn't forgot that. Pastor mentioned it two or three times this morning. I'm telling you, I believe tonight that every single one of us ought to kindly rehearse that time when we got saved by the grace of God. You know where you was at. You may have forgot a date or something, but let me tell you something, beloved. You know when you got saved. Amen. And if you don't know when you got saved, you better check it out tonight. Amen. I was at Hollow Road in a night service, 22 years old. Wasn't even there to get saved. Just like some of you tonight, you didn't, you didn't come to church to get saved. But I want to tell you, I was lost, and I was on the back pew. But you know what? I'd been searching, I'd been looking for something, and I could not find it. I tried many things. But that night, the Holy Ghost of God got a hold of me, and beloved, I was backward, if you believe that, and bashful and all that kind of stuff. At 22, I was. And beloved, God got me down that aisle. I mean, my feet began to move, and it was him. I'd have never done that. But he brought me down, and they took the word of God and showed me that night how to be saved, how I could go to heaven. And I want you to know, and they said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall listen, can be saved, shall be saved. And said, if you put your name in there, I mean, that's you. And they got me to understand that that was talking to me. And beloved, I asked the Lord to come into my heart and save my unworthy soul. And I'm telling you, he did. How do you know it, preacher? I knew it the next day something was different. I didn't understand it because I didn't know much about the Bible. But I'll tell you what, I knew somebody had moved in. You, you, listen, God can't move in you and come to live in you and you not know about it. And things began to change. Boy, I'll tell you, things began to change. And I'll tell you, when you get saved by the grace of God, it will change. And I want you to know tonight as we're here, I want you to rehearse and go back to that time. Mm. And I'll tell you, if, if it means a whole lot to you, I mean, you could probably shout if you're going to shout about anything. Amen. Yeah. I mean, being saved by the grace of God. You know how many years ago that's been? That's been nearly 62 years ago. It lasts, amen. It, it, it wasn't just for a couple weeks or days. I want to tell you something. It's lasted 62 years. Somebody asked me why I get excited, but I'll tell you why I get excited. God saved my unworthy soul. And I want you to know tonight as you rehearse, beloved, I want you to look into your heart and I want you to be honest with me tonight. Beloved, if you're not saved, you need to get saved tonight. You need to be saved tonight. Listen, it ought to be a spatial thrill to ever save person to go back and, beloved, to that day when Jesus came into your heart. Paul rehearsed it many times. 
At least three times in the scripture. You remember when Paul got saved on that Damascus road. Beloved, let me tell you something. I mean, that was something, wasn't it? And he rehearsed that even before the king and others. He talked about being saved by the grace of God. Beloved, it ought to thrill you just to think that one day the Lord gave you old-time religion rather than this stuff that's going about today. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, it's real tonight. This choir sang like it's real. And it is real. Beloved, I want you to know if you're saved tonight, you'll know, you know, you know. And if you're not saved, don't you go another day if the Holy Spirit of God is dealing with you tonight. I mean, even before this service is over, the Holy Spirit of God convicts your heart. You come down here, let somebody take the Word of God, and you get saved. I was preaching Easter Sunday, and boy, I don't get to preach Easter Sunday as much, but the pastor was sick, and I went and preached, and beloved, when I gave the invitation, here come a lady, probably in her 70s. She's a-weeping. You know what she wanted? She wanted to be saved. You say, wanted to be saved? Yes, yeah, she's a church member. She said, I, I, I saw in my heart that I wasn't really saved, and I want to get saved this morning. And she got saved by the grace of God. Amen. Beloved, rehearse. Peter had one of the greatest services by rehearsing. He rehearsed what God had done and saving all those souls in Cornelius' house. Let me tell you something tonight, beloved. If you're not saved, you need to be saved tonight. The second thing I want to mention as you rehearse, while we're rehearsing, I don't think it, it, it bother, shouldn't bother us to think back in what God has done and what he's doing. I want, you to, I want you to rehearse a moment with me tonight this matter of being faithful since you've been saved. Quiet, isn't it? Let me tell you, the thing that we are missing in our local churches, and our local churches, many of them are sick tonight. And I want you to know, beloved, the thing that's missing is faithfulness. Faithfulness. I believe with all of my heart, beloved, as I look back over these 62 years, people tell me, you know, preacher, it's so easy to get out of church. Go, I'm telling you. Easy to get out of church. I want to tell you, that ought to be the hardest thing you've ever done. Amen. Beloved, the Spirit of God's in you, guiding you, directing you. And beloved, it's in God's house where you hear God's Word. It's in God's house where you grow. I have never been to a service in these 62 years that I didn't grow in the Lord and in the Word of God. Here's something that blessed my soul and helped me. And I believe if there's anything that we need in the house of God, in our churches, is to be faithful in these 85 churches I've been to. Some of them are closed. Many of them would have 20 people tonight. Been going for years. Beloved, let me tell you something. I believe with all my heart, I believe you look at yourself and you go back and just let your, let your heart and mind go over these years that you've been saved by the grace of God and see how faithful you've been. I believe the least thing we can do is be faithful. Amen. Faithful to a God that loved us and sent his son to die for us and paid our sin debt that we could not pay. Bought us off the slave market of sin and set us free. Yeah. Beloved, listen, he's done so much for us. In 1 Timothy 4, 7, Apostle Paul said, I fought a good fight I finished my course and I kept the faith. 
If there's anybody that I want to be like, it's Paul. Preacher said I'm not through yet. I'm glad I'm not. I love to preach. I love to uh, witness. I love to tell people what Jesus has done. I love to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus. And I'm telling you tonight, beloved, I know my day is getting down nearer and nearer. Uh, I, I'll soon be 84. And uh, you know yourself, look in the obituary in the morning. Everybody's not living to 84. Beloved, there's a lot of, thank God for Brother Henry, 94. I buried a man the other day, was 97. That's a long life. But I'll tell you one thing, beloved, I want to be found faithful. Faithful. And beloved, if, if we were called upon to give an account of our faithfulness, I wonder how many of us would enjoy rehearsing it. Mm. Amen. You know, some people decide whether they're going to go to church on Sunday night or not. They, they, they spend some time deciding whether they're going to go. I'll guarantee you one thing. You better be so walking with God in a relationship with Him that you won't have to decide when church time comes. I believe by the grace of God. Man, I tell you, I can't stand it. I've even preached with appendicitis. I didn't know I had it, but I sure found out before 12 o'clock I did. But I want to tell you something, folk. Uh, it, it, it's exciting to serve God. And I want you to know, I, I shouldn't have and you shouldn't, but I was back in the pulpit the next Sunday. I shouldn't have done that. I just didn't have sense enough to know. But I want to tell you something. I love to be in the house of God. And I want you to know you want to be in the house of God and be faithful to God's house in your attendance. What's wrong with Sunday school, some of y'all? You said, can't get up in time. I'll tell you, go to bed early if that's what it takes. But I want to tell you something. I've enjoyed Sunday school for these 62 years. I've had preachers all over this country say, you, you can get there at 11 o'clock if you'd like. You don't have to come for Sunday school. I'll tell you, beloved, not one time that I can remember did I skip Sunday school in those cases? Because I believe, beloved, it's important that one day the judgment seat of Christ is right ahead. Matter of fact, did you all know it's your next appointment? The next appointment in God, on God's calendar is the rapture. I keep practicing, but it don't do no good. I'll take gravity holds us down. But I'm telling you, one of these days, we are going up, and I believe it's going to be soon. And we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, every one of us individually. And we're going to be judged to the things that we've done in this body. And I'll tell you, one of those things is faithfulness. Amen. No excuses. You won't get to say a word. It's going to come up before. It's not for your salvation, but thank God it's for your service for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't have time getting that, but let me tell you, faithfulness, rehearsing. I, I'd like to do a little rehearsing about giving. God ever taught you, beloved, that that money you got in your pocket, that tithe belongs to God. It's not yours. And I don't want it. I, I tell you, I, I, I've had a lesson or two on that. And beloved, I'm not going to spend no time. I'm going to leave the preacher to do that. But let me, since you've been saved by the grace of God, how's it been in your giving? Have you been faithful? Do you love to? I've seen some of you trying to find the offering plate. And, man, that's great. That blesses my heart. I think it's a every Sunday thing. Amen. Every week thing. 
And then praying and witnessing, let me tell you, you rehearse that matter, see how faithful you've been. Let me quickly go on to number three. I believe that every child of God, as we rehearse back over our life, let me ask you if there's been a time in your life that you've got to the place and you've told God that you was willing. Willing. Amen. Did you know there's a lot of people not willing? I mean, there's a lot of people that are not willing to do nothing. Brother Jimmy was leading me through this morning, and he reached down and picked up a piece of paper, and I like to shout it. It's been a long time since I saw somebody in church just reach down and just pick up a piece of trash. I believe that we ought to be willing. I believe that's the thing that helped me out more when I got saved by the grace of God. And when just a young Christian, uh, the Lord and I talked that thing over. And that's the reason I believe, honestly, I'm preaching today. Because I just told him I was willing to do whatever he wanted me to do. Willing. Wherever God wanted me, whatever God, young people, listen to me. You make yourself available to God and just be willing, and God will direct your life. He'll place you in this world where he wants you at. If he calls you to be a missionary, be willing. Teach a Sunday school class, be willing. I've gotten real trouble through the years just being willing. Sometimes I get myself too busy just being willing. Let me tell you, they called me the other day from Williamston, North Carolina. I did, had never been there. I didn't know how far it was. Some of you folk go down that way. You know it's a long way. And I found out it's a long way. And beloved, I'm telling you, beloved, when you get as old as I am, Uh, My kids tell me there's a time that you need to say no. But I haven't ever found it. I had a call from Surf City, Holly Ridge Baptist. I mentioned it in class this morning. The other day, come down and fill in at the church. And beloved, let me tell you, that's a long way. 256 miles I was driving. And beloved, I want to tell you something. I, did you get tired? I sure did. But I want to tell you something. That was one of the greatest days that I'd had, beloved. It was a blessing. A blessing to be in that church and to see how it had grown and what God had done and was working through the young people. And beloved, just being willing You rehearse it tonight. Are you willing? God will bless you. Are you willing to sacrifice? There's some times around freedom that we need to sacrifice. We ought to be willing to sacrifice. Not only that, willing to witness and support. And we ought to even be willing to repent. We're not perfect, are we? And there's times God speaks to your heart, sometime when the preacher's preaching, and there's some things that you need to make right with God and just simply repent, get it under the blood, and you're, you just don't do it. Be willing, amen. Rehearse your life tonight. Listen, let's get our life in in the walk with the Lord. And I'm telling you, beloved, we've got some exciting things ahead. If he doesn't come, listen, it's a great time for the church. People are getting saved. People are thinking they need to know the Lord. And quickly again, it's hard. I'm telling you, mm, condense it down, preacher. I want you to know tonight, beloved, there should be a time in your life that you've had an experience with the Lord that's made a difference in your life forever. There should be a time, beloved, and and God, I, I believe every single Christian goes through that. 
I remember years ago, one of the greatest times that God spoke to my heart and had, has blessed this preacher through these years was when I was working full time and pastoring. Nothing wrong with that. But in 1965, I mean, this whole body was getting weak and, and the doctor told me and looked at me and said, you either got to quit preaching or quit work if you want to get well, if you want to live. I said, all right. And so what I did, I prayed about that thing. What I did, I went into work. Listen, I don't tell this to be any bragging. I'm just telling you this because this is my experience. Amen. I was making $250 a week back in 1965. Church was paying me $50 a week. I come told my wife, I said, honey, I'm going to give up my job. I'm going to do what God's called me to do. I'm going to preach. I went to the deacons, and they said, preacher, I don't know what you're going to do, but we'll consider a raise, and uh, they considered a raise, and they gave me $25. That's 75 And I said, Lord, I don't know how. You know, over in Ezekiel, there's a river, mystic river, and it said some of them went ankle deep. Some of them went knee deep. Some went loin deep. And some got out in waters to swim where they couldn't touch the bottom. And that's what I done. I couldn't touch the bottom. But you know what? God may give me the greatest peace I've ever had in my life. And God assured me, God assured me, listen, if you'll walk with God and be faithful to me, I'll supply your every need. Has he ever done you like that? I'll supply your every need. And I want you to know, nobody understood it, but God supplied Every need. Plus the church began to grow and things began to happen. But I'll tell you, beloved, I never was the same again. Always willing to trust God. All of those buildings there at Union Grove Baptist Church, they just didn't happen so. Even the parsonage across the street, $17,000, our fellows said, we can't do it. There's no way we can do it. But praise God, we did it. And then, beloved, all the other buildings up to the school, high school building, everything, listen, never one time did I have to worry about it. Because I got out in some waters to swim in and God said, if you'll walk with me, I'll supply your need. And he never failed, preachers. Amen. He never, one time, failed. I want to tell you something tonight. I don't know whether you've ever had an experience or not with God enough to trust him, beloved, that you can trust him 100% tonight to take care of your needs. Had a couple heart attacks. I'm talking about all needs. And beloved, I didn't know why everybody was in such a hurry in the emergency room because I had the greatest peace in my heart I ever had in my life. And I'm telling you, my God did that. And I want you to know tonight I'm here. I'm not God's pet. Beloved, God don't have pets. He'll do you the same way. If you'll walk with God, you'll put your faith in Him and you'll trust Him for every need. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, God's so good tonight. I, I, I can't get over how good He is and I'm glad that I got out in some waters to swim in. Waters to swim in. 
If you had never been there, you will be. But you trust God. And God will see you through. I wish I had time to tell you all the things. I mean, God is able tonight, folk. He's able. He owns it all. Quickly, while you're rehearsing, if you've never been there, I'll tell you, if you have been there, you're going to trust God for the rest of the journey and for the valleys that you're going to go through. I want you to know he'll be there, never let you down. Quickly, I want to ask you tonight, you know, this is a, this is a church tonight like I want every church to be. I, you're an example. And I'll use you as an example. Beloved, did you know most of our churches don't even have a visitation program anymore? That was our lifeline. Prayer room. Listen, we had prayer room tonight, men. If you would like to go pray, let me put a plug in for it. I believed in it. I, I, I know what God can do through prayer. But I want to tell you something tonight. God has given a commission and beloved, we need to continue to win souls to the Lord. They're still lost. The only hope for America is for our politicians to get saved. They need a lot of prayer, don't they? Beloved, listen, I want you to know that soul winning was important to Jesus. You walk with him. Woman at the well, the blind man, Zacchaeus up a sycamore tree. Wherever he went, he was interested in souls. If you were called on to present one single soul that you have been responsible of winning to the Lord, I wonder how many in this building tonight could do that. <coughs> I'm not trying to be mean to you. I love you. And I believe, beloved, that we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and we're going to have to give an account for it. Wonder how many in heaven tonight, beloved, would walk up to you and say that you, you were responsible for them being saved. That's one of the greatest blessings that I have going all, all around the country. Man came to me the other day, preacher, you remember 1972? I said, no, but I got saved by the grace of God. A young lady in our church said, preacher, do you remember uh, when I, at the altar, at five years old, you got down at the altar and led me to Jesus. And she's still serving God. Folk, let me leave you with this thought on this. The songwriter said, must I go in empty-handed? It's something to think about. Must I go in empty-handed, thus my dear Redeemer meet? Not one day of service, listen, give him, lay no trophy at his feet. Must I go in empty-handed? Must I meet my Savior soul? Not one soul which to greet him must I empty-handed go. Don't that kindly sober us up a little bit? Don't you think it's good for us to rehearse our life and see how interested that we've been in souls? Preacher, they just won't listen. Oh, yes, they will. There's lost people that will listen and they need to be given the truth of the gospel that they might be saved by the grace of God. Time's running out on us, folk. My time's running out, but I'm telling you, time itself is running out. Night's coming when no man can work. Rehearse it. it do you good. To go home tonight if you don't listen to God here in this service and begin to rehearse a little bit about your salvation and what God's done and then your life since that time you got saved by the grace of God. 
And then this matter of soul winning. But beloved, I believe in closing tonight, we need to be rehearsing that fact that Jesus is coming soon. The preacher don't know, I don't know when he's coming. But all that I have viewed through the years and in prophecy and studied the Word of God, and I heard uh, Jimmy DeYoung was at our church a few months ago, and he opened my eyes good. I want you to know everything is in place. Not much prophecy being preached these days. I was brought up under it, and Dr. Ron Comfort and, and many of the others, Brother Ralph Sexton, many, many of these folk. And I want you to know, beloved, I can sense it. The Word of God says when you hear that word, peace, safety. What's North Korea and South Korea talking about right now? They've come in together. They said, we're going to have peace. Peace. That only reminds me, folk, that I want you to know that Jesus is coming soon. Israel's in place tonight. Did you know that? Did you know, and I know you know, the preachers taught you, beloved, Russia's in place. Syria's in place. China is in place. All of these countries that God tells us about, beloved, is in their place. And I believe it's not going to be long in rehearsing this thing till Jesus is coming. You know what Jesus is going to do? He's not even going to send Gabriel. Not going to send Michael. Jesus. Loves us so much. He's a coming back for us. He's coming. He's coming. And the trump's going to sound. Dead in Christ rise first. And we which remain are going up together to be in the air. As somebody said, he's going to give us a new body like unto his glorious body. And we're going to live and reign with him Forever. I kind of like God's plan. Seven years we'll be there. And and then we're coming back in Revelation 19 to this earth. Some of you folk think the end of it. We're just going up there. Man, that's it. Let me tell you something. We're going to the judgment seat to see what we're going to be doing in the millennium. And he's coming back with us for 1,000 glorious years to live upon this earth, to reign and rule with him. And then the new heaven and the new earth coming down forever and ever, 1,500 miles wide square. I'm telling you, pearls, uh, mm, gates of pearls, street of gold. And thank God what he's got for us. But until then, let's keep on serving You can't quit. Ask Brother Roy. He's still got it in him to get up there. That's encouragement to me. Folk had told me, preacher, why don't you slow down? Let me tell you something, folk. I would if God let me, but listen, I want to tell you something. We need to serve until we see him face to face. Freedom Baptist Church, let me charge you tonight. Check yourself, every individual. If you're not saved tonight, you come trust the Lord tonight. And if you're saved and you're not a member of this church, hmm, hope my preacher don't hear this. 
I'm telling you, there's no place I'd rather be a member of than right here. Amen. I'm telling you, folk, I, I've sensed it since I walked on the grounds. You've got one of the best pastors, a great pastor. I'll tell you what, God put him here. As I said to the class this morning, he's a gift to you. And let's walk with God. Let's pray for him and back him. And let's get ourselves in the place that we've got the right relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm, Isn't he good? Isn't he precious? Let's stand together, every head bowed.